and says, oh, oh, and since we've committed that in our heart that we don't even know, let us open our mouth and ask for forgiveness of sins this morning. Thank you. 
Today, Father God, you've given us this opportunity once again to come before you. Holy Spirit, this morning, Father God, have your way with us in the name of Jesus. Come and take absolute control, Father God. Father God, may you send out your word. May you come and pour your spirit. You pour your spirit upon us in the name of Jesus. Amen. May you fill us in the name of Jesus this morning. That God, we will not be here to say, Father God, any expectations like that. Oh, we can be Father God. May you meet us, oh Lord, at the point of that, our needs, oh Lord, this morning. Come in the name of Jesus and take absolute control over everything in the name of Jesus. Father God, those who are expecting, oh Lord, oh healing in the name of Jesus. Father God, may you touch them. Those who are expecting breakthrough, Father God, may you open the floodgates of heaven unto them. Thank you, Jesus.
Eu adianta. Amen. Um, I thank all of you for being here today. Um, we are going to start with our Mother's Day program. I'm inviting um, Bishop Esther Ajima Tete to bring that women's ministry song. Let's do that for her. Precious lady, so of um, your honor, can you join us as we sing? Precious lady, precious lady, we must live for Christ. Precious lady, precious lady, holiness unto the Lord. we are going to introduce our speaker. Our speaker is in the person of Deaconess Esther Praboite. She is a woman of God, deeply committed to the word of God, the work of God. She has an extraordinary passion for the youth and pension ministry and is a catalyst for positive change through her dedication to teaching the scriptures, especially to young people. She is currently the regional youth and pension secretary Atlanta Regional Rep for Nipson, Norcross District Administrative Secretary, Stone Mountain Assembly Local Secretary, and Norcross District Women's Ministry Secretary. She is married to Dr. Kwame Boite, and together they have a beautiful doctor named Peniel. Let us welcome our Deaconess Esther Prao Boite. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm sure you are wondering why I took that to us. I've 
been thinking all week about how to climb that stairs <laughs> with my sleet. <laughs> we thank God for grace. Amen. Amen. Holiness. Holiness. COP, young ladies. COP, young ladies. Okay, so I see you. Pensa, pensa. Youth. Youth. And the last one, youth. Okay, so this has been a struggle, right? So COP USA, we decided to come with our own third slogan. So the third one for COP USA is rooted in Christ for maximum impact. So last youth. Rooted in Christ for maximum impact. Amen. This is a wonderful day the Lord has made. We all want to rejoice and be glad in it. The Spirit of God told me something this week which I want to share with all of you. Um, sometimes when it's Mother's Day, the devil tries to bring some kind of sadness into the heart of some people. For example, if for some reason you have lost your mom or um, you don't have someone to call you a mother, the devil might tempt you to feel very sad, but I just want us to all focus on what the Lord has done for us, the beautiful day the Lord has created for us, and let's um, get our joy in the Lord. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for a wonderful day. We thank you for the opportunity to come before you, to have fellowship with you and with one another. We pray that even as we go into your word, the Father, you may speak to us in a language that we understand in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So the theme that we have been given is Christian women and young ladies unleashed to transform their world. That's the theme that we've been given. Christian women and young ladies unleashed to transform their world. I'm not going to be doing a recap of what we did during the week because everything is kind of, um, you can find whatever we did through, throughout the week in the team because today we are dealing with the main team for the week. So I'll be touching on it as we go along. And it's true that today is Mother's Day, it's Women's Ministry Day. We are climaxing everything today. But um, even though the team says Christian women and young ladies, all of us here should benefit from the sermon, right? And so I'll just go ahead and put it together and just say Christians in general. So Christians are least to transform their world. So in that, we have our young women, we have our older women, we have our younger men, we have our older men. Hallelujah. Do we have some Christians in the house? Hallelujah. Okay. So um, talking about the theme, the... This unleashing agenda that has started. And I'm sure this year you have heard this sermon, the people of God are needs to transform the world 10 times, 20 times. Anyone? 10 times, 20 times? Okay. So you've heard it over and over and over again. So uh, maybe when you heard that, you were like, no, the unleashing again. But trust me, anytime the word of God comes, it comes to give us a different meaning. And that's why we even go to church in the first place, right? Because we don't know it all. Every time we hear the word of God, even if it's on, on the same thing, it gives us a different meaning altogether. And I trust that um, this morning we'll have a different meaning altogether. Now, the unleashing agenda started way back. It didn't start in 2024, right? Yes. It started way back. And so we'll take our first two readings, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and Mark 15, 16. And then Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. For the most part, I'll be using the NIV. If I use any other, ver um, any other version, I will let you know. So um, Mark 15, 16, 15, and then the Matthew, is when Jesus Christ actually started the whole unleashing agenda business, where he unleashed all of us. And so it's when you accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, Jesus unleashes you to go into the world, reach to other people, to win them, for Christ. So Mark 15, 16, NIV, it says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And then um, Ma Matthew 28, 19, also from the NIV says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So here in these two verses, Jesus Christ unleashed all of us to go into the world, to make disciples of all nations, more or less telling us to go into the world and to transform the world. Amen. And the reason why Jesus begged that actually is because um, God wanted to bring his original intent into being. And we all know the original intent of God. When he created man, he wanted to have a relationship with man. And then because of sin, now man was far off. God wanted to bring man back to himself to establish that kind of initial relationship with him. So we'll just start by defining a few of the words in the Greek. So first of all, we want to define what unleashed means. Unleashed basically means to be released. Okay? So in this case, released to go into the world. And the famous Bible verse that we have read over and over again, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and I read. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of who call, of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. So it's just trying to tell us that. And can you give us the verse 10? Please let's add the verse 10. Verse 10. First Peter chapter 2, verse 10. Yes. It says, once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. All what it's trying to tell us is now, I was reading the verse 10 and I was like, once you were not a people. And someone says that once you were not a people. What does it mean? Which group of people can you refer to as these people were not a people? Anyone? Dead people. I mean, if someone has a life in them, you cannot tell the person he's not a people or he's not a person, right? But you were not a people, are dead people. You were once dead in sin. Okay, but because of the death of Jesus, the Father that we accept, the Lord Jesus as our personal Savior, now Jesus gives us life, okay? And now we have life in him. And so that's why he's saying that once we're not a people, once we're dead, we didn't have any life. But now through Jesus, we have been given life. And God has chosen us specifically as a group of people. Before, it was only the Jews, right? We were not qualified. We are Gentiles. And for, for, for women, we have two cases. One, we are Gentiles. And two, we are women. Okay, so today is a special day for women. Hallelujah. Yes. But God has chosen all of us, okay, from our dead state. And now we have life. And he's saying that we should go out there and then gain other people for Christ. So that's what the unleashing is all about. Now we want to describe what world is. Do we have our PowerPoint, please? Now we want to describe what world is. Before we come to transformation, let's go to world. So world is basically wherever you find yourself. Okay, wherever you find yourself is your world. Wherever you find yourself is your world. So world could be your workplace, your school, your church, your society, social media platform, wherever you, found, you find yourself. Now, I was, talking, I was thinking about the social media platform being your world. One time, I was talking to an older man, and I was telling him that, <laughs> I, I, I was telling him that, that, you know that sometimes you can, be on, on TikTok for maybe 30 minutes or an hour. And he said, no, not 30 minutes or an hour. You can even spend three hours there. And mind you, this is somebody around 65 years. So if 65 is spending about three hours on TikTok, then those of you here, how many hours are you even spending there? So then it becomes our war because we spend most of our time there. So your school, your, um, your church, social media, wherever you find yourself, especially for most parts of your day, is your world. Amen. Um, Odiovisa, what happened to our PowerPoint? Okay. Because I spent a lot of time on the PowerPoint. The sermon itself was not a problem, but the PowerPoint was so much time. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So give me the, yeah. So world, go, go, go down. Yes. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, three. Okay, four. Okay.
working. So that's your world right there. So anywhere you find yourself, wherever you work, if you are working in the hospital, in the nursing home, you are a social worker, um, 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 warehouse, your school, wherever, it's your world, okay? Let's go to transformation, transformation, okay? So for transformation, it's a change in any form. It can be a change in type, a change in structure, a change in appearance, a change in any form. Now you see the little girl over there? You see the little girl over there? Yes, let's read the Bible verse and then we'll come to that picture. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 3, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And this time I want us to read from the New American Standard Bible. And I read, but we all with unveiled faces, looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord the Spirit. Amen. Now, let's go back to the slide again. You see the little girl in the mirror. Now, by nature, right, and this is called the law of reflection, those of you who did physics, if you look into a mirror, you are supposed to see your face, right? How you look, if you are in women ministry cloth, you have your hair braided, you look, you're supposed to see it. So look at the little girl. She's seen her image and she's so happy because that is the law of nature. You see your face. Now, if you look in the mirror and you see something else, assuming you're a young lady, you look in the mirror, you see an older woman, you'll be like, oh my God, this is some African voodoo right there, right? Yeah, you see a different thing altogether because that is not what the law of nature says. And this is what the word of God is saying. It says, but we all with unveiled faces, okay, looking into, looking as in the mirror the glory of the Lord. It's just trying to say that we, when we take a mirror and we look, the image that we are seeing in the mirror is the image of Jesus Christ. And like I told you, you are supposed to see yourself, right? This case, the, this is the word of God. This is not me. This is the word of God. He's saying that when we look in the mirror, we are seeing the image of Jesus or the law. So, which means that the equation is not balanced here because you are supposed to see yourself. Now, you are seeing Jesus in the mirror. Now, so to, in order to make the equation balanced, it means that the person looking and seeing Jesus has to be like Jesus. They have to be the same people, okay? And that's what the Bible is saying. You remember, you see that he used being, B I I. B-E-I-N-G, right? It means that it's a process. We are getting there. Other person says that becoming, okay? So we are looking into the mirror. We are seeing Jesus Christ. And the word of God is saying that gradually we are becoming like the person in the mirror. And that's how it's supposed to be, okay? Yesterday I was reading something. The person said that it's a theologian. He said that if you keep looking up to Jesus, you become like him. Okay, so as we behold him, as we keep beholding his glory, we become like him. Okay, let's continue. So the unleashing agenda, I mean the, the transformation agenda is in two forms, agenda number one and agenda number two. Agenda number one is about transforming your own self, you and I, okay? Transforming yourself, transforming myself. And then we go to agenda number two, which is transforming your world. Now, as a matter of fact, you have to do agenda number one before you do agenda number two. You have no business moving to agenda number two if you have not done agenda number one. I don't know how many of you have watched The Taste of Sin. It's a Ghanaian movie, but it's on Netflix. So people were making too much noise about it. So I said, okay, let me go and have a look. So if you haven't watched it, I'm sorry. I'm just going to take the suspense out. So even if you watch it, the suspense will not be here. Sorry. Now. What happened is that there was this great man of God, you know, preaching, doing miracles and everything. And then he had a taste of sin. So he, 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 he committed adultery with one of the choir members, not the TRWC choir member type. No, yes, one of the choir members. And then the lady became pregnant. And then they decided to have an abortion. Then the lady died. And it was in the news all over the place. Everyone had heard the social media everywhere. And then after that, he said he had repented. So he took his Bible to go out there and preach. The way the people beat him, man, they beat him, poured water on him, you know, pushed him away and all that. So I'm just trying to say that you have to transform your world, yourself, before you go out there to transform. Because people look at us. 
wherever you go, they look at that. So if you have not transformed yourself and you go out there, then maybe what happens to that man of God is going to happen to you. Amen. Now let's go to the next slide. So we, we want to go in depth a little bit about this transformation and thing, right? So, so there's something that we call metamorphosis, right? So there are some organisms that go through this phase. It basically means transformation, you know, changing from one form to the other. The bees, the butterfly, toad, some other organism, but we'll just use the butterfly as our study today. So what happens is that the adult butterfly lays eggs and then it transforms, so it changes into the caterpillar and then it transforms to the next one, which is the chrysalis. The chrysalis is just basically the pupa. Manage that word. Forget about that one. Okay? <laughs> Manage the pupa. And then it goes to the adult um, butterfly and then it comes to the butterfly. Now, when I was a kid, I knew the caterpillar. I knew the butterfly. I never knew. Anyone with me? Anyone? Okay. I never knew that the caterpillar is the one that grows or transforms or changes to become the butterfly. Because there are two different organisms all together. Okay? But that is nature for you. It changes. You see how the cycle goes? It goes gradually. I was reading that even some organisms take up to a year to change finally to that form, yeah. So it's not, it's not a one day affair, it takes time, but gradually they go through that. Now about two months ago, I didn't even know that I was coming to preach about this topic, but the Spirit of God took my mind to something. And the Spirit of God was telling me that, do you know that once the organism changes from caterpillar to um, a butterfly, it cannot go back? And I said, wow, this is so, it's so amazing. It cannot go back. So the caterpillar itself is slow. It's not beautiful. It's, it doesn't do much. But the butterfly, look at how beautiful the butterfly is. Kids like to play with it. It's pretty. It's colorful. It can fly. It can do pollination. You know, do, it can do a lot of things, okay? So the butterfly is what these organisms, what they want to achieve. That's where they want to get to. Not the, not the caterpillar. And in the same way, the, the butterfly cannot say that, man, I didn't sign up for this. This is too much work. I'm flying all over the place. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I don't want to be a butterfly no more. I want to go back to the caterpillar. It cannot happen. Okay? And so this is the transformation that we are all talking about. It's not going to take one day. And I always tell the youth, anytime that I teach them, I'm like, if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, it's okay. Don't let anyone force you into it. When the time gets there, we'll keep teaching you. When the time gets there, you will go. But if you force yourself to become born again, then you will struggle. Okay? So it is a continuous process. So as Christians, we are transforming. We are becoming like Christ every day. We are becoming better and better. Now, you cannot be transformed and then go back. So today, ah, God reign. Tomorrow, what? You know. Tomorrow, you'll be singing some David song somewhere and jumping all over the place. Okay? If you are transforming, you become a better person day in and day out. Until we all get there. Amen. So that's what the transformation is all about. Now we want to read something from, um, we're going to read something from Matthew. But before that, let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says that, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Okay? All things are passed away. So you cannot be in Christ and do the old things. You become a new creature. Like we saw right there, it becomes a new butterfly, a beautiful butterfly. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, we want to just go ahead and go to... Um, Transformation agenda number two. So number two is transforming your world, okay? They are, they are related because you have to transform yourself and then transform others in a way they are related. Now, the reason why God wants us to transform our world is because there's too much chaos. Chaos everywhere. And last Friday we heard that the world is what? It's not a dark place. Through this message, Sophia, we heard it's a dark place now. And so God wants us to go out there 
and transform it. There are a lot of things that are happening. Relative truth here and there. False teachings here and there. Um, LGBT here and there. So many things are happening around us. We see them every day. God wants us to go out there and transform it. And let's read Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth. And I'm reading from the NIV. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the lights of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it in the stand, on, the, on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So the Bible, and this we also heard on Friday, right? Those of you who are here, we heard on Friday that you are the salt of the earth, we are the light of the world. Why not light of the earth and salt of the world? Okay. So salt of the earth, okay? Now, to be able to, to see how useful salt is, most of the time we have to taste it, okay? And salt does a lot of things, preservation, healing, you know, giving taste, a lot of things. We can go on and on and on. But everything that has to be with salt, there has to be a contact. So one time I was watching a TikTok video, and the lady, for some reason, she put her salt and sugar in the same type of container. Now she was about to cook tea, and she just took one of the containers and put it there, put the content there. And now she finished the tea, she tasted it, and it's all sugar. And I'm saying, oh, even if it was soup, she should have washed the leaf. But now you see, how do you wash these little vegetables in there? Okay, so tasting it will let people know. So that's, that's why the Bible says that you are the salt of the earth. The people on the earth, they have to get that contact with you. And when they have that contact with you, they have to taste you. The Bible says that if a salt loses its taste, then we have to throw it somewhere. It's no longer you. So the question I have for you this morning is that all the people that you have contact with them, how is the taste like? Is it a good taste? Is it a bad taste? Do they even have a taste at all? Are you, are you doing what salt is doing? Preservation, healing, bringing happiness to people, bringing that kind of great taste to people. Are you doing that? And then the next one says that we are the light of the world. And this is talking about systems. It's talking about governance. It's talking about culture. The Lord wants us to shine our light on them. And how are we light? Let's go to the basics. Now, in the book of John, okay, the gospel according to John, chapter 1, we are not going to read the chapter 1, verse about 1 to 5. It says that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that had been made. In him was light, and that light was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Now, in him was light. L-I-F-E in Jesus, and the life was the light, L-I-G-H-T, of men. So it just means that anyone who accepts the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior, Jesus comes to live in you to have light. And you are expected to shine that light. And the question I have for you is that wherever you go, in the world that we describe, your job, your school, wherever you find yourself, do you show that light to people? Do people see this light? Is this light coming off to them, for them to see. Now, when, when I was growing, growing up in a country called GH, there used to be, they call it light off. So now, I don't know why they say light off. Because basically, we don't turn the light off. It's far out, right? But they say light off. Now, it lasted for so long that as soon as there's light, you can actually hear an uproar from people saying, hey! Anybody? Yeah, you can actually hear from, you'll be in your house, but you'll hear people, you know, happy, rejoicing. And that's how important light is. With light, you do a lot of things. With that light, have you, have somebody been in the room where you'll be like, oh, I'm not turning on the light, I'm just picking something off. You will search and search and search. And you'll be like, why didn't I even turn the light on in the first place? Yes, so that's how important light is. And that's how God wants us to go out there and shine our light so that people 
will see good things so, so that we will become effective in their life. Now, we have established that all of us have the light. So if you are not shining, then we are just like the person who lit the lamp and put it under the stand. stand okay? We have to show our light to people for them to see the good works. Amen. Now, I was telling a group of people that the Spirit of God just led me to think about something. And I, I was telling a group of people, and I'm going to tell you right now. Now, if you find yourself in your workplace, in your, in your school, wherever, anywhere, social media, anywhere that you spend a lot of time, and no one has ever reached out to you to say that, I think you are different. You look different. If it's your job, maybe your boss, your co-worker, the way you work is different. Or somebody approaches you and says, I, I, I have a problem I want to share with you so that you can help me, maybe in prayer or anything. Or I like the way you dress. I like the way you speak. I like the way you carry yourself around. If none of these things, nobody has ever said this to you in your home, in your school, there's a problem. There's a problem. I just want you to think about it. Where you find yourself every day, your job, wherever, your school, wherever. If no one has ever approached you, all these things that I've said are similar things, right? No one has ever approached you in any way. People are gossiping about people using all kinds of words and you are coming, they don't care. There's a problem. It should be such that when people see you're talking about some negative things, they'll be like, oh, she's fine. But you yourself, you are the leader. You get there and they're like, oh, let's say, hey, haven't you heard the so-and-so leader of the whole job? There, there's a problem. Because God wants us to shine. And that's why we're talking about the darkness. Where, wherever there's darkness, wherever. If it's a job that people are not punctual, people are not taking their job seriously, people are insulting their bosses anyhow. That's darkness right there. And so when you get there, you should bring the light. Amen. And so if you are not seeing these things, then God is speaking to us this morning that there is an issue, there's a problem. We need to talk about it. Amen. So our world can, can be anywhere, anywhere at all, anywhere at all. It could be our church, it could be anywhere, anywhere at all that we find ourselves could be our world. Now, um, when I was growing up, before that, one time a Pesani elder shared a story with all of us, okay? And in this story, <clears throat> he said that there was this woman who had joined the church, and this is a true story. There was this woman who had joined the church, and then they heard that the woman is sick, so they went to the woman's house to visit her. They got the address and everything. This is in Ghana. They got the address and everything, went to the house. They got to their neighborhood. They asked a girl. You know, if they, if anyone they asked, they said, we don't know her. They got to the specific house where she lives, and it's a compound like those of you who know from her, like a lot of tenants living in the same house. They asked someone who lives in that house that I'm looking for sister, so, so, and so. They said, we don't know anyone like that there. Hmm. And so they decided to describe the woman. Oh, we are looking for this fair, tall woman. They said, oh, she lives here. Her name is Bela. That's her door. And true, the man actually went to knock at the door with that name, Bela. And then the woman actually answered and came out. Now, for those of you who don't understand Ghana, it's a Ghana word. Bela means a quarrelsome, trouble, troublesome person. A quarrelsome person, a troublesome person. Someone who is also fighting, who is always fighting, making noise, and having issues with people. That's the meaning of Bela. And that's the name that they have been given. To the extent that they don't even know her actual name. That's the name they have given to her. They called her from her room and true to the words, she actually answered with that name and came out. Okay? Someone that we have unleashed you to go into the world and transform. You went to collect the name Baylor. How are you going to transform people with that? Another example, one time a youth member, a youth, a parent of the youth called me and said, Esther, do you know what my child did? I said, I don't know. So apparently they called her parents to come to the school. And the offense is that she threw food at her teacher in the cafeteria. Yes. And so the mother called to, you know, complain. I said, okay, I'll talk to her. So I invited her. I said, first question, did you throw food at your teacher? 
to certain other obviously to say how can you stand in front of your youth leader and say yes I threw food at the system to certain other I said why did you throw food at the system to certain other so the next question was um, do you feel proud throwing food at the FIFA and now she said no so I knew that she did it because now she said no okay if we unleash you to go into your school and transform your school we are not expecting you to go and throw food at your FIFA of all the things that you could have done you couldn't take a microphone to school to say hey repent Jesus is Lord that one is also against the school rule, but at least you can manage that right you didn't do that you went to throw food at your I'm just trying to give you some of these examples because these, hap these things happen in our daily life. And if you don't take care, we will lose sight of it, okay? And we'll think that it's okay. We, we, we wouldn't bother too much. Next one, and then I'll be done with the example. When I was growing up in my school, my daddy had been transferred to um, Accra. So we went to a different school. And in the school, I wasn't even three days in the school. I realized that there was this teacher in the school. He was different from all the other teachers. The way he dresses, the way he speaks, the way he does his things. And in his class, the very top of the board, he had written, um, brighten the corner where you are. This is elementary school. I didn't understand that in English. Okay. And his life was so different from all the other teachers. All the other teachers. And we used to do teachers on duty. So if you're on duty, you will lead them to um, the assembly, uh, worship on Friday. And um, he would teach us songs. One of the songs, I remember all the songs that he taught us. The very one that we usually sang was Head of Thy Church Triumphant. Uh, another one was King of Glory, King of Peace. King of Glory, King of Peace. And then um, the other one. I've forgotten the other one, but um, um, Thy Glory, Thy Great Jehovah. So songs like that were the songs that he was teaching us. And he didn't care whether we are marching or we are doing worship, we will sing those songs. We sang and sang and sang, especially head of that church triumphant. And as, as a kid in the elementary school, I thought that it was a bother because one, triumphant is a big word. Uh, anticipation too is a big word. How am I supposed to understand these words? But he didn't care. And don't tell me I should have Googled it, please. This is GH. And this is many years ago. I didn't understand, but he made, but when I grew up, and I was like, wow, these songs are understood, this song, especially head of that church triumphant by Charles Wesley. Beautiful songs. The words in there are so beautiful. There were other teachers on the campus, and I remember this one, this very teacher. He was a choir master in his school. So he's, he's also a, a, a Christian, right? And the, the reason why we, we got to know that he's a choir master in his church, not in his school, in his church is that they were, they were being, the choir was being sold on TV on Sunday evening. So they used to show choir singing hymns and all that. So they would show them and we would sing him. And that's how I got to know him. Now this man, the choir master, he was more or less like our choir master of the school. So we had this choir. This man never taught us any good songs. All the songs that he was, I was thinking, I was trying to remember. I didn't remember this week. I was just trying, 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 trying to remember. Now one of them is, Asugayo, Mabiram, Sobo. What kind of song is this? And then another one is, Akutu Chetabamayeko. Do you understand that? It means that orange seller, come and let me buy some. What do I have to do with someone selling orange? And the first one, Asuja, don't ask me to explain because I don't even know the head and tail of that story. He didn't teach us any good. You, that you're a choir master in your church, and now you have the privilege of having young boys and girls that you can mentor, you can teach them some. Look at the songs that he was teaching us. He didn't teach us. The only song that I remember he taught us that was that has something to do with a Bible was a funeral song because one of the students died. Uh, now the laborers have to show that. That one was a good one. But the other song, so I was just trying to think about it. We see ourselves in these places, okay? And remember that wherever God has placed you, it's for a reason and it's for a season. You are not going to be there forever. So then you make the most out of the time. Now maybe you were there for a long time but now we are no longer there. What impact do he make in our life? Okay, so wherever you find yourself, your school, your job, wherever, your church, how are you transforming it? Now this church that you see right here, it wasn't like this. 10 years ago, it wasn't like this. People have, um, have, have spent time at after school, mama after school, and all the leaders have spent so much time to transform it to what you have seen now. 
So the, the, the question I'm trying to ask you is that in your time, what are you also doing to transform your church? I was telling the group of youth members that now, if you belong to a church, you should find yourself doing one thing, just one thing. One thing that is special, one thing that is unique, at least one thing that you are doing in the church, whether it's during the church or it's after church or wherever. I mean, it has to do with the church. If it's in the choir, if it is playing musical instruments, whatever. But find one, just one thing. If you can find more, that's fine. But if you can't find more, at least one thing. Are you preaching? Are you cleaning? You can just identify one thing that is unique to you. What if you identify the fact that, okay, every day after place of service, I'll be the one to take all the empty bottles and put it in the trash. Or I'll be the one, after people have, have cleaned the place, I'll be the one to grab the trash and put it in the dumpster. Like, one thing, don't just come to church and leave. If you do that, you don't transform your church. And that's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to transform our world. And that includes the church. Hallelujah. So find just one thing. And another thing is that if you are already doing something, you have to be unique. You can't just be in the choir and be in the choir. You can't just be a worship leader and just be a worship leader. You will not prepare. You have to be unique. And then the Bible says, and yesterday, Sister Melissa used it, okay? God bless you. That was great. She used it as an initial um, or introductory sermon. First, went, first Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, faith, and in purity. And you know why I know I, I know these things because I follow you on YouTube. This one is not, I'm not going to brag. I said the Holy Spirit is leading. No, I watch it on YouTube. And I have been watching you on YouTube. And your live stream is so beautiful. God bless you. So tech team, that, that's, that's great. It's very nice. The only problem I have with you is that sometimes some people stand here and you don't see anything. So whatever you are doing, please stand on the pulpit, okay? And glorify God in your beauty, okay? So that we can also see you on YouTube. But your feed, your stream is very good. It's, I'll, I'll give it to you. It's very good, yeah. Yeah, so there to be unique in whatever you are doing. One time we visited another state. There was a program in another state that we went there, right? When we went, uh, it was a program, a church, POP, church. And... Um, the, the choir members, the singers, the program was supposed to start at 10. The first person showed up at about 10.30. The rest about 11. So what happened was that we, the visitors, we had to go and sing. And that day, I didn't pre pre prepare to sing. I was in my heels. The way my leg hurt that day, because we stood for like an hour singing. Okay, so a choir member should be different. Your choir is not like that, I'm just saying. So be different, whatever your hands find to do. Because like I said, it's for a reason and it's for a season. So let the Lord use you in these aspects to transform your state, to transform your world. Hallelujah. Head of the church, triumphant, we joyfully adore.
about this transformation here people and especially young people well this is my school this is not church you can tell me what I do in my school I paid my own tuition I can do what I like I can do as I please oh this is my job no it's different from church don't bring church issues here okay don't bring church issues here if you are a Christian you are a Christian everywhere you can't tell me what to do. I can do as I please. No, you can't. You cannot. And we will not allow you to do as you please. No. And you know why? Two reasons. There could be a lot of reasons, but I'll give you two. The first reason why you cannot say that is because we are a team. We. We are a team. The team is called Team Christians. Team People of God. Team Soldiers of the Cross. Team a People of God. And then we have sub-team, Team COP, Team Atlanta District, Team Atlanta PIWC. And so, wherever you find yourself, we represent all of us there. If you find yourself in your school, your job, on the street, you represent all of us. And that's why sometimes you see in the news, a Ghanaian man shot, before they even bring the person's name, it's a Ghanaian. And that's Team Ghana for you, Team GH. And in Ghana, where the church is popular, you see something like, an elder of the Church of Pentecost steals money at work. Before you even come to talk about the person's name, it's a church. And it's because we are a team. And so wherever you find yourself, you cannot do as you please. Because we are a team. That's the first reason. We are a team. John chapter 1, verse 12. And to all who received him, to those who believe in his name. He gave the power to become children of God. He says the first thing, children born not of natural descent or husband's work, but born of God. Your mother didn't give birth to you, your father didn't give birth to you to first you. But you are my brother. You and I are a team because we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and we are all God's children. That's the first one. The second reason why you can't go about doing anything anyhow is that you have been bought at the Jesus paid a high price for you. If you bought your new iPhone, iPhone 15 Plus, Pro, Max, whatever, and the phone decides that I'm not going to sleep inside your house, I want to sleep on the grass outside, there will be a fight. Because it was bought at a high price. Because if it sleeps outside, the rain can fall on it, somebody can steal it, anything can happen to it to this price. You don't want that heavy price, something that you bought for yourself. And for our mothers, your gold necklace, you bought it the way you are even keeping it. If your child touches it, ah, don't touch it. You know how much I bought this. And the necklace decides to sleep outside your house. It will be war. That one will not be a fight. It's war. Because it was bought at a high price. The same thing. Jesus paid heavily for us. And because of that, we cannot live our lives anywhere. Because anyhow. So if you do that, then what it means is that the devil is going to destroy you if you want to live your life anyhow. And that's not what God wants. He wants us to go there, out there, make the, be examples, be um, examples to people, and transform us. So don't be confused. Okay? Don't, don't tell your brother, don't be confused. Don't be confused at all. And let's read that Bible verse. I want us to, to read that Bible verse. First Corinthians, maybe this is the last Bible verse we'll be reading. First Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 19 to 20. And this time, I want all of us to read. We are going to read from the Message Bible. Give me the Message Bible if you have it. We are going to read from the Message Bible. That is, I think that is contemporary enough for all of us. So we use that version. You have the Message Bible? Anyone? Anyone with the Message Bible? Okay, go ahead and read it. Please use the microphone. Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. Yeah, read it. That's how the message Bible is. It gives you like a lot of verses and everything. So go ahead. This is 1 Corinthians. Okay. 
just wanted to see the last part where he says that don't you see that your body is a holy temple. You cannot choose the left as you please. I like how the message Bible puts it. You cannot choose your left as you please. You live, that's what we've, we've spoken about this over and over again. You live according to how the master wants you to live because you want to become like Christ. Okay, you want to become like Christ. I'll soon end. Now the transformation agenda it's not a very simple touch like you, you hear it. You say, change, transform, or remove. It's quite, it's quite um, tough. It's tough. And like we heard through this message here on Friday, the reason why it's tough is that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. It is a sin of the spirit, okay? So it's actually like a tug of war. The devil's kingdom, one side. The kingdom of God, one side. And everyone is trying to pull people to their kingdom. Okay, the devil is trying to pull people. We are also trying to pull people into God's kingdom. And because of that, it makes it very, very tough. It makes it very tough. That's why at the beginning of the year, people will come to church and raise their hands as high as they can. 31st. Our church person needs to say, I'm going to go out there and preach the gospel by fire, by force. We will not even end 1st January. They'll be sleeping. They can't go. And that's the work of the, 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 the devil, right? The devil will try to make you lazy confuse you, it will make you forget, you will plan to speak to someone about, let me take my phone and text somebody, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, before you know you're on TikTok, the text message didn't come up, that's the plan of the devil, he tries to use all kinds of things, he will use a lot of relative truths, false teachings, people will be saying all kind, kinds of things just to confuse you, and that's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit, we did that on Friday too, this message here, great message, I, I just like the way she said. She'll just be speaking slowly, but she'll be rightly dividing the word of truth, bringing you verses upon verses. I could listen to her all day. And when she said, I'm about to end, I was like, no, no, no. But we have to pray. Okay, so the spirit of God gives us that strength. And that's what the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in India, in Samaria, to the ends of the world. And I think that every Christian should know this Bible verse. This Bible verse. If you don't know, please know it. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It is the Holy Spirit that gives us power to be able to overcome all these things, people who are trying to confuse you. Sometimes you even want to share the word of God with your friends on campus, in school, and there will be people laughing at you, people trying to distract you. It will even put you off. You'll be like, let me just stop. Okay, that's the devil right there. Using all kinds of things. Sometimes it's laziness. Sometimes I don't care. Sometimes I don't know the word too much. Using all kinds of things to, 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 to um, distract you. And we pray. And that's why prayer is also important. Reading the word, going to the word. So that the Holy Spirit will give us that strength, that power to be able to share the word of God with others, even as we transform our lives. Hallelujah. Now, conclusion. Conclusion. Everyone likes conclusion, right? Okay. So, conclusion. Now, how many of you like good perfume? Everyone likes good perfume, right? You want the expensive ones, good perfume. And that's because you feel so, you know, proud when someone, oh, I like your perfume. Oh, what are you wearing? You know, we like that. How many of you like it when people say, this smell is not very good? No one likes it, right? Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15, also from the Message Bible. This I'm going to read. Because of Christ, 
He gives up a sweet scent rising to the Lord, which is recognized by those on their way to salvation. This is what the word of God is saying, that when you believe in Christ and you live a Christ-like life, wherever you walk, wherever you go, you are giving up a sweet smell. So I'm passing, I'm going. You are giving a sweet smell. So people who are passing by you on their way to salvation will stop and ask you, what scent do you have? What, what are you wearing? This perfume, just like we all love. So this morning, my question to you is that, do you want to give up that sweet smell that people will turn back and look at you and be like, what scent are you wearing? As you walk by people, as you pass by people, what scent are you wearing? What are you giving up to people? And in conclusion, this is what I like to say, okay? You are here for a reason and for a purpose and for a season. You are here. The here refers to wherever you find yourself. So tomorrow, when you get to your school, say to yourself, I am here for a reason, for a purpose, and for a season. When you get to your job, say to yourself, when you get to home, say to yourself, wherever you find yourself at any given point, if you pick your phone and you're on TikTok, say to yourself, I am here for a purpose, for a reason, and for a season. And it may not last, it may not be too long. So whilst you are there, what are you doing to transform yourself? What are you doing to transform your world? Remember, God brought us here, wherever you find yourself, to impact and to be part. To transform yourself, to be transformed, and to transform others. And then the Bible says that the woman at the well, when he met Jesus, he went out quickly, calling other people to come. And he says in First John, the first thing I'm doing there, was to call his brother Peter. After he met Jesus, the first thing he did, call his brother Peter. Come and see, I have seen the Messiah full of grace and truth. You, when you met the Lord, what is the first thing you did? Who have you run to call? You know the group of people who don't call people when they get greetings? You know their names, right? Selfish people. Don't be selfish. Let's call other people to come. But first of all, let's transform ourselves to transform others. In Christ, holiness unto the Lord. Let your life be holy. Virtuous woman, let people say of you that many women have done noble things, but you surpass them all. Youth, may you arise and shine wherever you go. Pensa, pensa, Christ in you. Let Jesus in you be the hope of glory wherever you find yourself. And man, you are the image of God. Wherever you find yourself, let people know that you are the image of God so that they can glorify him. Thank you. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wondrous compassion and pure. the word that he has given us. And let us pray that God, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in us. Shall we pray? Li kandala vaksiya in dele baba ba. Ma yan dele ba sin tele ba bori yan dele baba ba. Ma lu kandara ma sin tele ba bori yan dele baba ba. Li yan dele ba sin tele ba 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 ba. Ma yan dele ba sin tele ba ba bori yan dele ba ba ba. Li kandele ba sin tara ba ba ba. Ma li yan dele ba 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 ba. 
present ourselves before you this morning in the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God. We thank you for the word that you have given us, O God. And we pray in the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God. May the beauty of Jesus be seen in us, O God. We are praying in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Father, let the Spirit of God help us. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in us. Transform us, dear Lord. to continue to pray. We are praying two prayers in this session. We are praying that God transform me first of all and help me to be able to transform everywhere that I find myself, every space that I find myself. And then the second prayer, we are praying the Holy Spirit we are weak. Help us to be able to achieve this. In our weakness, strengthen us. In our laziness, give us strength. Help us in our distraction. Whatever the devil wants to use to distract, to distract us, we are praying the Holy Spirit give us their power because your word says that we will receive power. May we receive this power in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus, Father, may you transform us, O God. Jesus, may you transform us, O God. Father, help us, O God. Jesus, help us, O God. Father, help us, O God. May you transform our lives, O God. That Father will be able to go out there and transform the world. Make us instruments of your transformation. Make us vessels of your transformation. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, in our weakness, may you strengthen us, O God. Father, in our weakness, may you strengthen us, O God. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, may you grant us power. Jesus, may you grant us power. We don't have any power of our own.
my weakness. Let Jesus help me to transform me so that I'll be able to transform others. And then we'll pray for the rest of the week that the Lord will take us out and bring us in our schools, our jobs, wherever we find ourselves, our family members, that the Lord will protect us, the Lord will be with us. The Lord will bless this church. The Lord will lead the leaders. Give them greater grace to be able to help us. Let us pray. Represent ourselves before you this morning, Spirit of living God, Spirit of heaven, Jesus. Father, may you help us. Every weakness that is in us, Father, may you transform us, O oh God. Just as you do for the Father, you want a complete transformation. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, commit ourselves, O oh God, into your hands. Our families, our friends, our loved ones, our church members. May you protect all of us. May you bless us. May you keep us. May you take all of take care of us. Our outgoing and our incoming, oh God. We pray for this church, oh God. We pray for the leadership. We pray for the members. Cause us to grow from grace to grace and from fullness to fullness. Continue to build your church. Jesus, continue to build your church. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shall we be silent before the Lord? Let's be seated. Shall we take our seats? Shall we be silent before the Lord? And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the word that you have spoken to us simply and softly in the language that we have all understood. We pray that, Father, even as we leave, you will cause your Holy Spirit to continue to explain to us and give us a deeper understanding, deeper insight of your word. That you will help us to be able to transform ourselves first of all and we'll be able to transform our world. We pray for the weak. May you bless us and keep us. Our friends, our families, our loved ones. Anyone that we come across. May you bless all of us. May you, may you be with us. Give us the strength to go out and come in. We pray for your church. We thank you for what you are doing in PRWC Atlanta. And we pray that you continue to build your church. The leadership is in your hands. We pray that you continue to use them to build your church. The members are in your hands. May you continue to use them to build your church. We pray that if there's anyone who is going through any weakness here, may you give us strength and may you meet us at the point of our need. Any prayer request on the heart of each and every person here, I pray that in the name of Jesus, may you meet us at the point of our need. May you strengthen us. May you be with us and above all, may you give us the strength. May the Holy Spirit give us that power to be able to rise up to transform the world around us. We thank you so much for answered prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you and happy Mother's Day to all our mothers. God bless you. Amen. Oh, amen. Shall we all be on our feet?
special offering. Special offering. Now when it's time to take a special offering, somebody looks at somebody else and they think you should give. But on Friday, I was saying here that this is fertile ground. Amen. And so if you have a need and you're believing God, I want you to trust him to sow in this fertile ground. If you have been part of um, the women's ministry services, um, when the national met, I was so intrigued. There was, there was translation, like from English to Spanish to French to some other languages. And all these works that we are doing, it requires money. And so this morning, I want to encourage you to give bountifully. Now, some of our um, women ministry leaders are not here, but I've taxed them and they brought their monies. So, um, Deaconess Erica, Deaconess Comfort, Deaconess Seraphine, God bless you, I've received your monies. This morning, we are raising $2,000 um, $2, only. $2,000 only. Um, some of us are in school, and sometimes we wonder and think that our parents should give. But we have needs that we meet because we work also, right? But when it's time to offer, we think that it's, uh, it's the big men and big women who should give. But Deaconess Esther mentioned something, that we are a team, and if we are doing this together, it is to the glory of God. Amen. I want to read something shortly from um, Luke chapter 12, verse 33 to 34, and I'm reading from the Message Bible. It says, be generous, give to the poor, get yourselves a bank that can't go bankrupt, a bank in heaven, far, far from bank robbers, safe from embezzlers, a bank you can bank on. A bank that you can bank on. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be and end up in. So we are sowing this morning into a bank that cannot be embezzled. Amen. Amen. Um, we are raising $2,000. So please give bountifully. More than 50 in this place this morning. So if you are sowing $50, if you are sowing $20, if we come together as a team, then we'll be able to raise that money. So I don't want you to look at somebody else and think they should give. But this morning, I am trusting God with you that as you sow in this fertile ground, we'll be able to raise the money and the ministry of the women will go further. Amen. God bless you.
Amen. Oh, put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. I, I just don't understand why it is the Women's Day. And we are singing celebrate and all the women are sitting down. You are not even clapping. You are not even doing anything. You are just sitting down watching the phone. Can all the women be on their feet? Can all the women just do it again? Celebrate. Jesus celebrate, clap your hands loud and sing. Mother's Day. We, we appreciate our mothers, our sisters, our siblings. We appreciate you all so much. I mean, I don't know. I keep saying this and I say it all the time. I am always on the feminine side. I am always, if, if you had not witnessed a woman in labor before, oh my God, when my wife was in labor. Oh my God. I keep telling the story. And we've heard a lot of stories where anytime women are going into labor, it is 50 50. Is it whether they come or they don't come? A lot of things that goes on. See, yes, a lot of complications. Just last week, I lost, we lost one of our sisters just in labor in Ghana. Very young, 39. So if I see women, I say, let's celebrate. The good Lord has been good to us. The good Lord has been so good to us. I know time is already gone. We don't have much. It is the heart that backs what we want to give you. And yes, I hear the news telling you, you men say, I'm a man, you get what? No. Not because ours is too small. When it gets to men's, men's week, you give us something small. We we'll have a list for you for the men's. <laughs> we have a demand. But we have something, you know, flowers and a little gift for you. 
So when you get to the shop, you know, shop for yourself. Buy some hair, some makeup, some, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Get yourself some stuff, oh God. Amen. Give me some music as we sing. We go around and we share our gift to God. My musicians, give me some music. Sweet mother, I no go forget you, eh? for the soft away you suffer for me. Pensa, pensa. This announcement that original leader is doing, so I don't know who can be there. Amen. So for our Pensa conference coming up, um, what is July 11th or 14th?
many of us have perished from, and we are working together as pastors to make sure that we minimize all such matters to come, so that regional leadership can secure the accommodation for us. So, which means that if we're going to the center conference, we should even worry about, oh, where am I going to sleep or anything of that sort. Once a group of people can come together, if we want to do four in a room, it will be eighty dollars per person for that three days. There will be great pastors as well. And the district is trying to see if we can also get you some money to pick up the time being. Amen. Um, so you just have to pay eighty dollars for those three days um, for accommodation. If you want to do two in a room, it's going to be one fifty. And if you want to do one in a room or um, husband and wife, it's going to be three hundred dollars. Amen. Uh, we posted this in our group chat, the Youth and Center chat. Um, let us go ahead and register so that we can secure our um, rooms as early as possible. Amen. If you encounter any difficulties, please reach out to Sister Abby, who is our local leader, and Brother Emmanuel, who is the assistant, and they will be supporting you guys. Amen. The other one that we want to kind of um, let you all know is our Transformers Conference coming up. One of the things that I picked up from our dear sister, um, my own sister, Miss Meg, her first station is that what change are you striving to make? What we need to you won't do. She remembered us when we made this um, certain prayer that, hey, when I was in GRWC Atlanta, this was the impact that I was able to make. Amen. That is why Transformers Conference is coming up. And as part of Transformers Conference, we call the Transformers Challenge where we want you to identify one unique thing that you'll be able to impact within this assembly, right? Um, what is that unique thing that you want to be able to introduce? Our sister Alice and a group of people introduced the coffee thing, and every day if I'm coming to church, even if I leave church in the church in the morning, I know that when I come, I'll be enjoying myself over there. Hallelujah. I've become um, um, a, a customer together with the restaurant. So something that somebody has been able to implement, and that is helpful for us as well. So what is the one thing that you want to implement? We see the wedding dress that has been introduced to bless us all together. So come up with something. Don't just let be a participant. Don't just come through and leave without making an impact. Introduce something. And this is an opportunity for us to introduce something and work with our leadership. Amen. So Transformers Conference is June 19 to the 21st and we have a host of things coming up as well. Amen. Other than that, I think we we have Doxa coming up. Please save the date. Doxa is coming up. Doxa is coming up on August 1st. Um, Saturday, August 1st. Please, please, please save the date. Let us publicize it as much as we can. Invite a friend. And let us be better than what it was last year. Amen. Hallelujah. And let me pick this opportunity to see two men in the room and come to make this very important announcement to the men. Next week, Sunday, after church, we have invited uh, this very renowned doctor to come over and educate us about our health, men's health. It's very, very, very important. I know the men, we are very, very busy. Sometimes don't even have time to go to the hospital to check on ourselves. So this doctor will be coming to educate us about our health. As soon as we close from here, we will all go downstairs. We'll have refreshment, and then the doctor will be there. We are central. The men in central have also been invited. This is a district women program. And so I will give us elder loving words. Hallelujah. This very important meeting, we need all men. So if you are here, you can encourage your father, uncle, whoever is in the house with you to come and listen. Men tend to wait too long. Um, too long to go to a doctor. Some don't go at all until things are things are over. Just for me to make it easy. When there is nothing else that the doctors can do to help, we wait too late to visit doctors. So if you are 
30 years of age and above, we are going to encourage you to come downstairs just after church next week. It's all about men's health. We are going to tackle about two or three organs. It will be short. One hour we have a nice refreshment and get yourself educated. So if your dad is not here, encourage your dad to come. If your husband is not here, encourage your husband to come. We don't want to wait until nothing else can be done for that person. But it is very, very important. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Um, one more announcement. Very important one as well. Please don't forget to make use of it. Part of our confirmation agenda is to be able to increase both numerically and also winning souls outside. Hallelujah. Internal evangelism. And we have started that. Amen. Hallelujah. They gave birth on, on May 26, which is the last Sunday of this month. They'll be naming their daughter. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we want to be able to let you all know that May 26 is the day that they'll be having the dedication. Let us all come over and support them like a family as we normally do. Amen. I guess we all know who Adam Akwan is. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. So, over to you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you, Pastor Jack and Anna. Uh, what a fruitful bit of time to come and share the beauty of the Lord with us. Holiness. Abigail. You know, I've been taught in some of Memorizing that. Amen. So um, we would like to thank the National, uh, the Women's Ministry International. We also say, like to thank the Regional Women's Ministry, the District Women's Ministry, and also the Local Women's Ministry. Amen. We would like to thank um, the Almighty God for making another day in celebration of God's word as always. Um, and we also like to thank our elders, our deacons, and also our brothers, husbands, and brothers, everyone who came to support our program today. I believe God has so blessed all of you. And um, last but not the least, we want to thank all the beautiful women and young ladies in PIWP and in Pentecost National Asia Hall. We couldn't have done this program without you all. And we also want to thank our Deaconess Esther Fraboite for such a wonderful and powerful word. Amen. Let us not just be listeners of this word. Let us be the doers of the word. Put it into action in everything that we do. If we are not transformed, please, I hope you have been transformed today so that we will all be able to transform our little corner of the world that we find ourselves in. Amen. Um, Alice, there's another announcement. Amen. So as part of the Women's Day celebration, um, our elder son is the bride of our Virgin Mother, and that is Alice on 14. thank you and say God bless you. We exceeded our target. We have 2,072. God richly bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you all for giving. Can we please be on our feet even as we receive the closing prayer? And so our Heavenly Father, this afternoon, say we are grateful unto you. We are thankful unto you, Father, for your faithfulness, for your love, and for your mercy that you have shown upon us. We thank you once again for this day. 
We thank you for your word that came unto us, O Lord. We pray that your word has fall on our hearts that is fresher and weighty and has filled your word and to use it in everything that we do. We pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to transform us in everything that we do for you to transform our world also. And then, Father, if there is any reason, if there is anything that is blocking the success of our transformation, we ask that you will take it out from our path, O Lord, so we'll be able to continue and complete the transformation that you want us to achieve. Spirit of the living God, we pray and we thank you for your daughter and your sister that you brought unto us. We pray and ask that you continue to strengthen us, Lord. We continue to give her the words to speak, everything that she is called upon to speak. Anything that has come out of her, we pray that you will replenish, O oh Lord, in a ten thousand fold. As a Father, even as we are living here, we are not living your presence. We pray and ask that let your presence go before us. Let it go with us. And let it go in us in everything that we do, O oh Lord. We pray for nothing the rest of the week into your hand. Guide us, lead us, protect us. Deliver us from any evil plans that the enemy has for us this week. So when we meet again and someone asks us how was your week, you will be able to say that it was blessed and it was good. We give you glory, we give you honor. We thank you, Lord, for your wonderful service and your wonderful gift. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.